Millions of monkeys in Florida are distributed throughout the state, from urban areas to farm areas. They vandalize and attack people right on the streets. The government and farmers are very concerned and have taken measures to deal with the millions of invasive wild monkeys. We will tell you what Florida farmers are doing to deal with invasive wild monkeys. Hello friends, Florida, one of the states located in the eastern part of the United States, is facing a serious challenge to agriculture and local communities. The invasion of wild monkeys the animals that cause a significant damage to Florida and agriculture, estimated by about $75 million per year. Furthermore, their ability to attack humans possess a risk to the community. The way to control this situation has given a rise to a series of measures of which shooting down wild monkeys is one of the popular methods. Conducted by licensed Florida hunters, this method uses hunting equipment to shoot wild monkeys. However, hunters must strictly comply with Florida state hunting regulations. Hunters can use fruits to attract monkeys, and this will make us find monkeys much, much easier. Shooting down wild monkeys is considered an effective solution to control the number of wild monkeys. A report from the Florida Department of Natural Resources and Environment said that about 10,000 wild monkeys are shot down each year. However, it is important to note that this measure is also ethically controversial. Shooting down wild monkeys is the most commonly used method in Florida to control the wild monkeys population, but is also the most controversial. Some people believe this measure is cruel and unnecessary, especially considering the intelligence and affection of wild monkeys. However, supporters of this measure say it is the most effective way to control the number of invasive wild monkeys. Maintaining a balance between controlling the wild monkey population and the ethics of dealing with this situation remains a major challenge. Continued research and discussion of other control measures may help shape the future of wild monkey management in Florida. Planting these types of barrier trees isn't only a means of protecting agriculture from attacks by wild monkeys, but can also be an environmentally friendly solution that does not harm other animals. The cactus with its thorny appearance, the eucalyptus with its unpleasant fragrance, and the verbena with its hard leaves help prevent the entry of wild monkeys. Importantly, planting this barrier can create a protective perimeter around the fields, helping to maintain a balance between agricultural protection and the survival of wild monkeys. This is an example of how people and communities can seek natural solutions to handle complex problems in agriculture and protect the environment at the same time.
This smart choice of using trees not only creates an environment suitable for agriculture, but also helps maintain diverse flora and fauna. Supporting the development of wild monkeys and their natural environment, By combining agricultural intelligence and respect for the environment, we can ensure that both humans and nature can exist together in balance. Planting these barrier trees not only helps protecting agriculture, but also promotes positive interaction between humans and nature. This is an example of how we can respond to challenges without destroying the natural environment and other animals, while creating a stable balance. Dogs are animals trained to perform many tasks, and their use to attack monkeys has been used successfully in several locations around the world. Trained dogs are capable of attacking, chasing monkeys away from crop fields and urban areas. The effectiveness of this measure is due to the monkey's fear of dogs, and sometimes it only takes the presence of a few dogs in the area to keep them away. This helps control the monkey population effectively without causing great harm to them. Using dogs to attack monkeys not only helps protecting agriculture and the environment, but is also an example of how humans can find creative solutions to challenges in animal management, wildlife and maintain balance in nature. The use of cage traps is an organized method to control the wild monkey population. Types of cage traps include knit traps, box traps, and burrow traps. The use of cage traps allows us to safely capture and collect wild monkeys that need control. Most importantly, this method does not cause pain to the monkeys, ensuring the capture process is humane and does not cause harm to the monkey's health. After capture, the process of caring for wild monkeys is an important step. Wild monkeys need to be health checked and vaccinated to ensure that they are not carrying any infectious diseases. Additionally, providing food and habitat similar to their natural environment is necessary. Another important thing is that the area where we release wild monkeys must be suitable for their natural living needs. This helps in the preservation of natural habitat of wild monkeys and ensures that they have the opportunity to live freely and effectively reintegrate back into the wild. Trapping cages and caring for monkeys in other areas is an effective and humane way to control the wild monkeys population. However, to implement it effectively, coordination between authorities, farmers and communities is needed. Only through this partnership can we ensure that controlling the wild monkey population not only helps protecting the environment, but also ensures the safety and sustainability of the development of both humans 
and wild monkeys. Have you ever met a wild monkey before? And what have you done to stop it? Please comment below in the comment section to let us know. And for now, let's continue watching the rest of the video. Texas is the largest state in the United States with an area of more than 268,000 square miles. Texas terrain is diverse, including plains, hills, deserts, and forests. Most of Texas is plain. The Texas plains are some of the most fertile agricultural lands in the United States. Wild boars often forage in plain areas where they can find plenty of grass, grain, and crops. The western part of Texas is mountainous. The southern and southeastern parts of Texas are desert. Wild boars are also frequently appear in these areas. East Texas, in particular, is a wooded area where berries, seeds, and other plants are abundant. The growth of wild boar has been clearly seen in these areas. Feral hogs are found in all 254 Texas counties, but are most concentrated in the eastern, central, and southern regions. Wild boars are very fast animals and can run away from traditional hunting methods such as hunting on foot or hunting with a vehicle. Moving will be more of a disadvantageous situation in many different types of terrains. Traveling on foot to hunt in mountainous areas and forests will cause hunters to encounter many dangers and waste their energy. Helicopters can move much faster and more flexibly than traditional hunting methods, making it easier for hunters to track and shoot wild boars. Wild boars often live in remote and difficult to reach areas. Helicopters can help hunters access these areas more easily. The Texas Feral Hog Hunting Campaign was conducted by a group of local farmers and contractors. The campaign used helicopters to detect and shoot wild boars. Pilots are trained to identify wild boars and will use sniper equipment to shoot them down. Before boarding, Make sure the hunter has all the necessary license and permits to hunt in Texas. Hunters should also check the weather forecast to ensure that weather conditions are suitable for flight and hunting. Choose a pilot who is experienced and trained in helicopter hunting. Pilots can help hunters find areas rich in wildlife and ensure that the hunter's flight is safe. When the hunter is flying, use the hunter's vision to assist the situation. Look for signs of wildlife, such as footprints, droppings, and noises. Make sure hunters have the right equipment for helicopter hunting. This includes sniper gear, scopes, and a helmet. Always hunt safely and responsibly. Always know the location of hunters and others in the area. Flying at lower altitudes also for clearer visibility and easier detection of wildlife. Taking it slow in the air provides ample time to process information and make well-informed decisions. Wild animals often prefer resting in shaded areas 
during the daytime. Seek out regions with trees or other structures that create shadows for potential observation. Texas boasts numerous areas teeming with diverse wildlife. Familiarize yourself with these locations and tailor your flight plan accordingly. With a bit of preparation and hands-on experience, you can evolve into an effective helicopter hunter. This campaign has proven to be a successful method for managing the wild hog population. In the year 2022 alone, this initiative succeeded in eliminating approximately 50,000 wild hogs. Soar into the skies with confidence, armed with the knowledge of the terrain and the skills needed to make a significant impact on the wild hog population. The cost of the Texas feral hog hunting campaign is shared between farmers and contractors. Farmers typically pay for plane rentals and pilots, while contractors are responsible for ammunition and other expenses. The average cost for a wild boar hunt by a plane is about $500. This cost can vary depending on the size of the area being hunted, the number of wild boars captured, and other factors. The Texas feral hog hunting campaign is an effective way to control invasive feral hog populations. This campaign has minimized damage to crops and the environment in the state. However, with such a large cost, you should also consider before participating in these hunts. What additional measures have Texas farmers taken to deal with wild boar hunting? Let's see more and more through this whole entire video together. Let's continue watching. Beaver rats are native to South America but have been introduced to many other areas of the world, including the United States, Canada, and Europe. These species was first introduced to the United States in the 1800s and has quickly spread to many other areas Invasive beaver rats can have negative impacts on the environment. They can destroy trees, cause landslides, and pollute water sources. Beaver rats can also compete with native animals. Lick traps and wire traps are popular and effective methods used to capture beavers, providing many benefits in managing and controlling beaver populations in aquatic environments. This trap works simply by climbing down on the beaver's legs as they try to eat the prey. Beavers often move along riverbanks and canals where they reach and search for food. Placing food traps in these locations is an effective way to capture them. Please pay attention during the trap sitting process to be careful of injuries. Pitting the trap carefully and firmly to the land bank is also very important because when a beaver gets caught in the trap, it'll struggle and the trap may come loose.
special attention to checking traps to harvest them. They can be captured or released. This method has been rated as one of the most effective methods for dealing with invasive beaver rat populations. Wolves, native animals of the Arctic and high mountain areas, are increasingly invading many areas of the world, including snowy mountain areas. Their appearance and their special terrains pose many challenges to the local environment and bias fee. They can compete with native animals, such as reindeers, and attack the livestock as well, posing a threat to the local bias fee. One of the most effective ways to control coyote populations is the use of food traps. This trap works by clamping down on the coyote's legs as they try to eat the prey. To effectively trap coyotes in snowy mountains, it is necessary to choose locations where coyotes often pass, such as animal trails and water points, place traps in locations with deep snow to hide the trap and make it difficult for wolves to detect. Choose a trap that is designed to be sturdy and able to withstand the harsh weather conditions of snowy mountains. Check the trap at least once a day to make sure it is working properly and that coyotes have been caught. According to estimates by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, about 10,000 coyotes are harvested in the United States each year in controlling wolves in snowy mountain regions. Implementing effective and suitable measures is important to protect the ecological balance and ensure the well-being of both the environment and local communities. The wild boar is a mammal native to Europe, Asia, and Africa. These wild boars have been introduced to many other areas of the world, including North and South America, Australia, and New Zealand. Wild boars are omnivores, and they can eat a wide variety of plants and animals, including grass, grains, fruits, vegetables, rodents, small mammals, and birds. Invasive wild boars cause negative impacts on the environment. They can destroy trees, pollute water sources, and compete with native animals. Wild boar trapping is an effective method to control wild boar populations in mountainous areas. To ensure maximum performance, trap location selection is important. Animal trails and wooded areas are common locations for wild boar to pass through. At the same time, it is important to hide traps carefully because wild boars have poor eyesight. These large cage traps are effective methods used to control feral pigs in large areas. To set up large cage traps, it is important to choose the trap location, which should be in places where wild boars often appear. Then, dig a hole large enough to accommodate the cage and make sure that the cage is firmly secured. The bait is also playing an important role, as it needs to be the type of bait that the wild boars are always eating. When all preparations are completed, the cage door is closed when the wild boars enters, from which they are captured.
The number of wild boar harvested each year depends on many different factors. The extent of wild boar encroachment on the environment will influence decisions about harvesting. In addition, laws and regulations also play an important role, as some areas have restrictions on trapping wild boars. Human accessibility also influences this decision, as hard-to-reach areas will make trapping more difficult. So since these solutions have been affecting in preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below. Plus, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.